Welcome to the Hunt Fish Travel Podcast, the first and longest running female hosted hunting podcast. If your idea of heaven is cold air, darkest nights, warm campfires, and a sleeping bag, you've come to the right place because she's ready to help you navigate your trip of a lifetime. And now, here's your hostess, Carrie Zilka. Welcome to the Hunt Fish Travel Podcast. I am your hostess, Carrie Zilka. This week, we're talking to John Collins from Wired Outdoors and Tooth and Claw TV about hunting coyotes in Kentucky. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or Stitcher Radio. If you're crunched for time, I recommend Stitcher Radio. It has this nifty play at two times speed option. Super handy for when you want to listen to a 40-minute episode, but you only have a 20-minute drive to work. And don't forget to tell all your friends about the show. It means the world to me when you help get the word out. The easiest place to share it, as well as the show notes for this episode, can be found on the website huntfishtravel.net under the show tab, or the direct link is wwocznet slash EP142. John, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show. Yeah, it's good good, uh, good to hear from you, Carrie. Let's, uh, let's just jump, let's jump right into it, because I know we kind of have a lot to cover, and I have a All lot right. of questions for you, so... <laughs> All right. Well, I'll try to. I'll try my best to answer them. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit more about Kentucky. I love your accent, by the way. It's so well, fun. Well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Tell us, are you originally from Kentucky, or did you move there? No, I've I've lived here my whole life. I actually, lived in the same county my whole life. Uh, really? Um, yeah, and I've traveled all over the place, and I always look forward to coming back home. I really, I really enjoy Kentucky. I don't see myself living anywhere else. So that's awesome. So give me give me the elevator pitch of why I should consider it for my next trip, say to hunt coyotes. Well, you know a lot of you know a lot of people don't really think of coyotes as their number one you know animal to go after. Of course, of course I do. <laughs> but uh, you know when people a lot of people think about Kentucky, probably the biggest draw for Kentucky is our white-tailed deer. Yeah. You now Kentucky has been in the top for Boone and Crockett entries for the last I don't know, last several years, and. So, you know, our deer herds come a long way, kill a lot of deer and kill a lot of big deer. And the turkey hunting is phenomenal. I mean, it it's a great state to come turkey hunting if you're looking for some hard gob on the eastern gobblers. It's really? a good place to come. Yes, it's it's terrific. I got guys that come down every year for to for wired outdoors. It's actually based out of Pennsylvania. And of course Pennsylvania have a ton of hunters. You know, they got a million yeah. hunters up in Pennsylvania, and they love coming to Kentucky to turkey hunt, which the season opens up earlier here than it does up there, and they always look forward to coming to Kentucky for, for turkey season. Really? But, you know, yeah. Yeah, so the turkey hunting is great. Yeah. And then on top of that, you know, we've got a great elk herd. We've got a big elk herd here in eastern Kentucky. I think we've got a herd of over 10,000 elk now, and they usually – you know, I think it's a draw. It's a draw hunt. I think you usually draw like a thousand tags. I think I've been I, I'm hunting. not sure sure what the bull to cow ratio is, but you know, there's a lot of elk in Kentucky, and it's a pretty sought after tag. I've so. been. I was going to mention the, the elk. I've I think for the last four or five years, I've put in for the draw <laughs> every year. Yeah, for the elk. yeah. <laughs> I haven't drawn yet, but you I, know, you never know. And I tell you what, I think. Uh, you know, I think over the next couple of years, it would not surprise me one bit to see the world record Boone and Crocodile come out of Kentucky. It seems yeah. like they get bigger every year. Every year, it seems like, if not every year, every other year, they're breaking the state record. It's it, They've got some big elk. And I've already seen some trail camera pictures, and here's some elk spotted. It's going to be, you know, going to be some big animals. So Yeah. I think... I think Kentucky's DNR does a phenomenal job, and your website. They as, do. as a non-resident, your website's really, really user-friendly. Yeah, the Kentucky, you know, Kentucky uh, Fish and Wildlife, they yeah. do a phenomenal job with with all animals. It's not just the elk; right. it's with the deer. That's the reason we're, you know, like I said, we're last several years been in the top for Boone and Crockett entries for white-tailed deer. And like I said, when I was younger, when I was a kid in high school and stuff, I always wanted a turkey hunt. There wasn't many turkey around. And, you know, the population of turkeys from 20 years ago to now is just crazy yeah. how they exploded. And it's all its all got to do with the Kentucky Division, you know, Division of Fish and Wildlife. It, sure. It's all on them. So, Do you guys have a higher predator um, population then? Obviously, with the food source growing larger, I would think that you would have more predators then. We, we've got a lot of predators, you know, we don't have, we've got, 
you know, we've got coyotes, we've got gray fox, we've got red fox, we've got bobcats, we've got black bears. It's increasing the numbers now. And, um, you know, we don't have as many coyotes as you would have in western states like, you know, say Wyoming and up in the Dakotas and down in New Mexico and places like that. But for the for the east of the Mississippi, we do have quite a few predators, and they're statewide. You know, you can find all those species minus the bear in every county in the state. So Interesting. Very cool. Is there a lot of public land to hunt in Kentucky, or is it mostly private? Like, I just did an uh, interview about with a gal about um hunting bear in maine and i just assumed that most of maine would be public and she was like no it's mostly right. private so i've learned not well, to assume anymore <laughs> yeah it's it's mostly pri- you know mostly private here there's a lot of private land in kentucky and but there's a there's plenty of public land like if somebody was wanting to come down here and visit hunt uh, i think uh i think you know just off the top of my head don't you know quote me on it but it, it should be close to I think there's well over one and a half million acres or something like that of public land. I mean, wow. Daniel Boone, Daniel Boone National Forest. If you've ever heard of that, that's right here in Kentucky. Oh yeah. And I'm thinking it's like seven hundred thousand acres just in that. And then we got uh, 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 land between the lakes. It's in between Barkley and Kentucky Lake, and I think it's like another hundred thousand acres or something like that. So there's there's a lot of land here to hunt. You know, if somebody wants to come in and hunt. There's a lot of public land in eastern Kentucky. That's where all the elk are at. Um, hmm. So, I mean, there's if somebody and they're packed full of game. There's big deer comes off those places every year, and there's there's predator hunting opportunities. You know, you can kill coyotes and bobcats out of at all those places. It's it, we've got plenty of uh, plenty, you know public land opportunities in Kentucky. If somebody yeah. wants to come in and visit and hunt. So, when you're specifically going after coyotes, do you personally prefer like private or public? Which do you think is a little well, easier? Well, probably private, you know, especially like if you can get private land kind of sold up to yourself, you know, if you don't have to worry about, uh, if you're a turkey hunter, and I know a lot of people, if people's listening, they're turkey hunters, you know, turkeys can get call shy real easy. If you got too many people fooling with them, somebody mess up on a turkey, they learn quick. Well, a, a coyote's even, you know, even more so. You, if you mess up on a coyote once, you, you might not ever call him back in again, or it's going to take a pretty good, you know, length of time in between you made your coyote stands where you can never call it up. So I really like hunting private land just on the aspect that if I can get that place sold up just for myself and don't have to worry about other hunters, you know, messing with them, usually yeah. I have a pretty good chance of killing them. But, you know, it's kind of a selfish way to look at it. You know, at the same no, time, right. I want anybody that's interested in hunting, I hope they can find places to hunt. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Is Do you guys have – so – I guess this is a two-part question because I'm always got deer on the brain. So right. your 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 non see your non-resident tags. Can you purchase them over the counter, or is there a lottery mm-hmm. system, or is it like uh, certain states you like, can get the predator tags real easy, but you have to draw for the deer? Yeah. No, um, you know I think our non-resident uh, annual hunt license is like a hundred and forty dollars. I think. Oh man. Um, and that's you know a year license and i think they also offer like a it's either a five day or a seven day license like if you just want to come down come in for a week to do some hunting i think it's 55 dollars. oh nice so it's not too bad and it's... and everything is over the counter like you you'll buy your hunting license and you'll have like if you're a deer hunting you get to buy a deer permit or if you was turkey hunting you get to buy a turkey permit and you, they're all over the counter you know you can buy them straight over the counter there's no draw only thing there's a draw for that I'm thinking of right off the top of my head is the elk. Okay. Yeah, sure. Well, that's inter- That's nice. That's so yeah. nice. And that's really, pretty, really reasonable. Yeah, it's not bad. You know, I I do a lot of Western hunting and, and uh, you know, an elk tag costs you 600 bucks yeah. that west. You know, <laughs> exactly. and that's not even getting out there, buying your license or nothing, you know, just you tag. Yep. A lot of money, so it's no, not bad. You come to Kentucky and 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 get into some good hunting, pretty fairly cheap. That's awesome. So, what other states have you hunted coyote in? Do you? Well, I've you hunted. Ah, uh, <laughs> well, you know, I have to say I like hunting in Kentucky off a lot, just because I know the land really well, and I've got you know hunted spots years after years. But uh, I've hunted in several different states and. You know, I've hunted in 
in Wyoming, do a lot of hunting in Wyoming, do a lot of hunting in Oregon, uh, usually the eastern part of Oregon. I've filmed hunts in, um, in Ohio and in Pennsylvania. But uh, I'd say the, the top three states that I usually hunt are Kentucky, Wyoming, and, and Oregon for predators. Interesting. That's quite the gamut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I definitely I definitely do not care to travel to find some good hunting. I, you know, if you've got good hunting and you want me to come to your place with a good invitation, I'll probably be there. <laughs> right. So do you use different tactics to hunt them? See, I mean, because Oregon, Wyoming, <clears throat> they're completely different states from yeah. Kentucky. Do you use totally different tactics for hunting them? Well, you know, usually my main thing is, is I'm, I'm – I'm a coyote caller. I'm trying to call coyotes in. Um, I use hand calls and, uh, and electronic calls, both uh, okay. to lure in coyotes. You know, usually using sounds, trying to mimic like a, a rabbit in distress, rabbit distress, you know, cocktail sounds, uh, jackrabbit, and even snowshoe hair distress sounds. But, um, you know, and coyotes, you know, that's their, that's their meal. That's what they eat every day if they can. They love to eat a rabbit. And then, you know, if they hear the, if they hear a dying rabbit, they know what that sounds like. You know, if they hear a dying rabbit and if they're hungry and they're near shot, they're probably going to come to it as long as the wind, you got your wind and all that type stuff, you know, they're going to come to the call. And, um, you know, bird distress sounds like a woodpecker distress or your game bird distress sounds, they're very effective. Coyote vocals, and when I say coyote vocals, like, uh, howls and distress sounds from a coyote like a pup distress or, or adult distress they work they work really well so hmm. that's usually what i'm doing i'm a, I'm a coyote caller that's that's what that's how i want to that's how i want to kill them i want them to come to me for me calling to them and you'll come running in hard as they can it's a it's an exciting hunt okay so let's talk a little bit about tactics because full okay. disclosure i've never been predator hunting I never really had any interest until about maybe, I don't know, two years ago. I've always just focused on turkeys and deer, like, completely. But recently, somebody turned me onto the whole predator hunting thing. So I was like, well, right, maybe. Right. Yeah. So the questions I'm asking are probably very rudimentary. but Okay. So talking about tactics, do you hunt them at night or do you hunt them during the day? Well, <clears throat> Kentucky has... Uh, they have a night season. Uh, coyotes are in year round here in Kentucky. You can hunt them year round, but to hunt them at night, it's just, it's a short season. It usually comes in like the uh, first of March and just lasts for just a handful of months. Oh. And um, they've kind of got a restriction on it too. You can only use shotguns uh, at night to hunt coyotes in Kentucky. And so I'm I'm mainly a daytime coyote hunter. And there's nothing wrong with nighttime hunting, but, you know, I, I kind of like to see the animal yeah. coming into the call. A lot of times if you're hunting at night with a light, you know, you're shining a red or green or a white light, and you're usually picking up eyes. You know, you'll see a set of eyes, and they'll be bouncing, and finally when they get close enough, you can see the full animal. And that's all right, but, you know, I like seeing the cat, you know, the, the animal run in itself. That's one of the, part, the cool things to me about predator hunting, whether I'm sure. calling coach or bobcats or whatever, and plus, we're filming all of our hunts and usually night hunting and filming don't <laughs> mix real well. So I'm basically a daytime call. Okay. For well, and that was going to be my next question. Like, what do you use at night? Do you like use night vision or, I mean, yeah, like, but it well, just some seems so complicated. Too, I think it's, yeah, I think it's, I think night vision is legal here. Of course, you'd need to go, if you're going <laughs> to come to Kentucky, you need to check up on the rigs. Cause I don't know for sure on that. Cause I use, I don't do it, but I know a lot of States, can use like night vision and stuff that's getting really big now in the coyote hunting community but there's still a lot of people that that are diehard night hunters use they'll use a, some type of light and usually they'll have like a a red a red colored light is really popular for coyote hunting and i'd say the next would be a green colored light and then just your basic white light would be kind of rounded off being said i'm not a you know i'm not like i said i'm not a nighttime hunter but yeah. i have done a little bit of it would you use different tactics at night compared to during the day? I uh, I would say the biggest, you know, as far as different tactics, like probably your sounds that you would use for calling would be the same, but you might have to change just how you set up a little bit just to make sure 
you know, animals aren't coming in from behind you and stuff. You want yeah. them to come where you are be able to shine your light. Other yeah. than that, that would be about it. A lot of people hunt. I know down in Texas, uh, a lot of people hunt from high rises in trucks where they'll put they'll put an elevated type stand in the bed of their truck and they'll drive out to these big, huge cattle pastures and stuff like that. And they'll get up in these high high rises in the back of their truck and get to calling and shining lights. That's big down south, huh. you know, so that is one different tactic that people use in other states. But it's so foreign to me. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I tell you what, you know, uh, predator hunting's got a special place in the hunting industry and in the, and in, you know, hunters' lives. If you ever, if you ever try coyote hunting or bobcat, just predator hunting in, in general, and if you have some success at it, have a coyote or a bobcat fox or whatever come to a call that you've made or that you've had electronic call do you pretty much be hooked when yeah. you have something run in i mean it's it's pretty it can be very addicting <laughs> and it seems like it seems really challenging because it is it is you know they're they're a smart animal you'll never hunt i mean i've hunted there i've hunted everything not everything but i've hunted yeah. elk in several states, a couple different states, I've hunted mule deer, I've hunted whitetail, black bears, mountain lions. You know, I've done a lot of big game hunting and a lot of small game hunting and stuff, you know, growing up. But probably the most challenging hunting you'll do is trying to call a coyote in. Of course, you've got some dumb coyotes, just like you have <laughs> these kamikaze coyotes that'll commit suicide, just like somebody <laughs> turkey hunting. You might, you might yeah. call one and it's trying to commit suicide, and you might go for two years and not ever call another one. Right. And coyotes like it, they're just a smart animal. You know, a lot of people have pets, dogs as pets, and you kind of got to think of them like a dog. A dog is so smart, and yeah. they, their nose is so keen, and it's just they're just a hard animal to outwit. So what would be the number one tip you would give a new coyote hunter then? So say I called you up and said, John, I'm going to go coyote hunting this weekend by myself. What is the number one tip you would give me? Uh, probably watch your wind. Uh, okay. Uh, a coyote, the first thing to do, like I said, I'm a, I'm a coyote caller. Whenever you start calling to a coyote, especially if they, if it's a coyote that's got a little age to them, the first thing they're thinking is go downwind. They want to circle downwind of the sound so they can smell it they'd rather smell it first than see it hmm. so you know you you kind of got to and that's where it plays in you got to watch how you set up um, it's kind of like um, turkey hunting and deer hunting wrapped into one you're calling plus you know you got to worry about them smelling you okay so why don't you tell us more about you like how did you get you have such a fascinating career so far how did you get started in hunting well, I mean, I was raised up hunting. I started shooting at a young age. You know, I've been shooting rifles and shotguns ever since I can remember, pretty much. Okay. And uh, started out like a lot of a lot of kids do in the East that grew up in a hunting family. Started out hunting small game. Started out squirrel hunting. I always loved to go squirrel hunting. and still do to this day. Mm-hmm. And uh, kind of went into rabbit hunting, you know, bird you know quail hunting stuff like that just have always been around it and uh just it just stuck okay how did wired outdoors come about well wired outdoors is a pennsylvania based company um and they are sponsored by kentucky department of fish and wildlife resources and um, i think the first year that they were sponsored by kentucky they come down in the spring to do a turkey hunt and I don't think they was having much luck. And I knew a guy in the department that knew they wasn't having much luck and told them that they might be able to get them on some birds down in, down in my area. And, of course, they, they hollered at me and asked, you know, the guy asked, and said, well, John, have you have you been turkey hunting? It was like the first day of turkey season, you know, a few years ago. And I told him, yeah, we've been hunting. We we killed two. And I've always filmed my hunts. I always had, I always loved, you know, filming a hunt and going back later on and watching it, you know, when it's, a nasty day you can always plug your camera into your tv or you burn a dvd you can always pop in and watch and just relive the hunt i've always liked doing that so we had filmed a couple hunts that day and of course that that had them sparked up and asked me if i would take them take the wired outdoors crew hunting the second day of turkey season here in kentucky so i thought it sounded like a cool opportunity i told them come on down i went the night before and roosted a couple birds up and the next morning they introduced themselves and 
I got them in on a turkey, you know, a turkey set up just, you know, way before daylight where I'd uh, roosted a couple birds the night before and, I don't know, hour and a half later, they had two toms strut about 12 steps from them, and the rest is history. They offered me a contract just a few days later. So oh, That's awesome. And and to give a little bit more background yeah. on Wired Outdoors, like I said, it's a Pennsylvania-based company, and they used to be on the Sportsman Channel, but it's all it's, it's now all Internet-based. They've left the Sportsman Channel. Now you can, they've got a website, you know, wiredoutdoors.com. You can watch all their shows on demand through there. they got a YouTube channel. It's Wired Outdoors TV. And they've also got a, a free Roku channel, if you're familiar with Roku. Yeah. They've got a Roku channel. And, and then far as Tooth and Claw TV, you know, after I joined the group, I asked them what all they wanted filmed and they asked me what all I did, and I told them everything and also did a lot of coyote hunting. And of course, they said, yeah, film it. And uh, we was doing a lot of coyote shows, so we decided to do a spinoff of it, which is Tooth and Claw TV, and it's 100% pre- predator hunt. Hmm. You know, mainly coyotes and bobcats and and we do a little bit of black bear hunting too. Okay. So. And where can they watch that? Is that on the website as well? It's it all go it'll all stream through all the Wired Outdoors networks. It'll be, you know, on the website wiredoutdoors.com and Wired Outdoors TV on YouTube and Wired Outdoors on Roku. And we're also kind of working on I don't know how quick we'll get it up. We're trying to get a Apple TV channel going and a Samsung Smart TV channel going too as well nice. hopefully in the near future. That's excellent. That is awesome. Yep. Yeah, pr- pretty love, excited about it. I love how modern technology has given us all these yeah. resources. Yeah, it's uh it's pretty cool, you know, it and I and I'm really happy with the internet based model. You know, it uh gives us some flexibility. We can put a show out whenever we want to and uh yeah. another cool thing about it when the show's over, if you want to watch it again, you just go right back and click on it again and watch it. If you want to watch awesome. it next week, you, you know, you, the shows are always there. So tell us, tell us your most favorite story, favorite hunting story. So when you're sitting around the fire having some beers with your buddies, what's the number one story that you tell them? Oh man, <laughs> so many. I know, right? <laughs> well, well, there's been plenty, yeah. But <laughs> you know, I don't know, Carrie. If I can think one right off the top of my head, but you know, usually it's usually it's the last hunt I've been on because you know we. We hunt, we hunt year round for predators and stuff, and uh, you know, it's like I said, it's usually the last hunt we've been. On. All my hunts, I think, are special. Yeah. I always enjoy every time I go out. So you know, usually if I'm sitting around and and somebody asks asks about a hunting story, I'm usually just telling them the last the last hunt we've been on. That's fine. Lay it on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can go ahead and tell you. We actually just released a video today. It was a. Uh, a double coyote, we killed two coyotes, a pair of coyotes, and um, me and my cameraman, and we, I actually work a day, you know, I work a day job, I run a bulldozer for a living, and I've been doing that for about 10 hours that day, and cameraman got off work, and he was wanting to go hunting, you know, called me up, asked me if I had any coyote stands played out, so I usually get on my phone, I've got a couple apps on my phone, you know, where I can see a lot of people use these for deer hunting, they put their stand locations in, and they can check how the wind's blowing. I'm sure you probably do the same sure. thing here. I think there's a scout look or whatever. I get on that, and I've got all my coyote stands laid out, too. So I got on there checking for wind, how the wind directions were for, for that evening. And I figured out a couple spots we could go to. And we actually went. We had two stand locations planned out. And usually when I go call for coyotes, I usually call just 10 to 15 minutes. That's the kind of the beauty of coyote hunting is – you can you can go to a spot. You can start calling. If you don't see anything in 15 minutes, get up, go to another spot, try to call something else in. So that's one great thing about coyote up. We went to our first spot. We called for about five minutes. I look over my right shoulder. Here comes a coyote barreling in, right in behind us. It kind of goes down into a dip, and I tell my cameraman, "Hey man, we got a coyote coming in hard right behind us. We need to kind of turn around and get set up." We actually got spun around. But the coyote come in directly to our right was within five foot of us. Of course, that's not always the best scenario in the world. We didn't get the coyote killed. It got too close. It seen us, took off the other direction, and we never even got a shot. So it was kind of scrambling, trying to figure out what to do. We made it back to the truck. I said, we got, I got one more stand location we can do. We traveled it quick as we could. And of course, it was the last light. On our way in, we spot, I spotted two coyotes out in the pasture field. We was able to get out there and get set up. I set my call out. We got to calling, and within 
a minute, maybe a minute and 10 seconds, we had two beautiful coyotes come running over the top of the hill right in there to us. I shot, I stopped the coyotes and shot the first one at about, uh, about 80 yards or something like that. As soon as I shot, of course, the second one took off, racing off right directly where it came from, and I was able to swing my rifle on it, lead it a little bit, and shoot it on a run and hold it up too. So it was an exciting hunt. Like I said, if you ever try a coyote hunt and have, and have some luck with it, you'll be hooked for life. And that's kind of a perfect example of it. I was pretty pumped after that. We got it all on film and actually released a show today on all of our uh, network. So you get on and check it out later. Excellent. Oh, and is that the, um, <laughs> is that from the hunt, the pictures that you posted on Twitter of those two laying there? Yes. Yes. That that, so exactly. Cool. What fun. Well, that is so cool. Like I said, you know, it may not be the most exciting or best hunt I've ever been on, but like I said, I, it's, Usually when somebody wants to hear a story, I usually tell them the freshest ones in my yeah, mind. So that is cool. That's it sounds it sounds pretty exciting to me. It is exciting. I think if anybody that ever tries it, you know, anybody that's ever done any kind of hunting for any period of time is running into where a predator has either ruined a hunt or has affected a hunt in some way, whether their deer numbers are down, turkey populations down or they had deer coming out or turkey strutting into the call and all of a sudden a coyote runs after them and busters busters set up up or whatever you know predators affect us all and they affect all kinds of other game animals and they actually affect ourselves too you know so it's yeah. it's pretty good practice you got to do some predator control yeah that's kind of somebody opened my eyes they're like yeah i'm like i just don't i don't have any interest in it and they're like and because my thing was like, I just don't have any interest in shooting anything I can't eat. And he was like, well, right, yeah, right. but they're, you know, affecting things that you do eat. So you can look they at do. it. They, yeah, they, uh, you know, a coyote, uh, a good way to look at it is, you know, you got, it's to manage your predators. Yeah. You know, it, they're just like, they're just like deer or anything else. You know, the, the state agencies are always managing them. Uh, you know, to keep the herds healthy. And the same thing for coyotes. If the coyotes population gets too high, usually Mother Nature steps in and takes care of them. You know, like, uh, say, the mange. The mange, the mange, like you see in dogs, that's a big killer to coyotes, especially in high populations of coyotes. And uh, usually what happens, they'll get to, everybody knows what the mange is. It's a, you know, gets in their skin. They usually start losing hair. It just drives them nuts, itching. You know, it's a skin parasite. Mm -hmm. Usually what happens, time winter rolls around, if you're in a, in a state that has really cold temps, usually what a coyote does is end up freezing to death. It's a long, painful, excruciating death, and I figure a bullet through the lungs from John Collins is a lot yeah. better than freezing to death by Mother Nature, so I have yeah. no problem getting That's after a, them. That is a good point. That's a very yeah, good and, point. And, and like I said, they, they impact a lot of animals. You yeah. know, even when, they're, when they're, their numbers are healthy, they can really lay waste to a turkey population. They're hard on deer ponds. They're hard on elk ponds. They're hard on everything. You know, everything out there that's in the wild, they'll they'll feed on. So yeah, little buggers. <laughs> so, what <laughs> exactly. <do> you, <laughs> exactly. so what do you got coming up this fall? You got anything exciting other than obviously hunting Kentucky? Well, I actually leave Friday for. Um, for northeastern Oregon, will be black bear hunting. We we'll should be out there for for eight or nine days, and hopefully we can kill us a couple bears out there. And uh, then I'll be back in Kentucky for about five or six days, and then me and uh, the owner of Wired Outdoors, Jason Say, will be headed to New Mexico. He's got an elk tag, pretty nice tag for a nice unit, and uh, I'll be filming him on elk hunt. That's so. awesome. Then got a couple other trips. I and later on in October we'll be heading out to Wyoming and do some coyote hunting and stuff. So got a pretty full fall lined up. Nice. So you mentioned that you do have a day job. How do you balance? Like, does all your vacation just go to wired outdoors? Yeah. Well, it's a pretty flexible job. You know, I okay. you know I don't have to really be at it every day. And and like you said, it, if I got any days off, it's usually it's usually hunting and filming. Yeah. of some sort so yeah well awesome it's, it's not too hard you know if i had a regular you know 40 hour a week or 50 hour a week job it wasn't very flexible i, I wouldn't be able to do it what yeah. i do but i got a pretty pretty flexible day job that's awesome i'm glad to hear it because i thoroughly enjoy what you do so <laughs> selfishly i appreciate your job <laughs> 
Yeah, no problem. Where can people find out more about you? Like, obviously your website, wiredoutdoors.com. Yep. Um, what about yep. your social media well, channels? Well, I've, you know, I'm on Twitter and Instagram. I'm, you know, at John underscore Collins three on both of those. And uh, you can also follow us on our Wired Outdoors Facebook page. Our, our Wired Outdoors Facebook page actually has over 750,000 followers. So go on there and like the page and see what we're up to. That's impressive in this day and age. Yeah, yeah, it's a pretty big, pretty big Facebook page, that's for sure. That's awesome. Good for you. That's really cool. All right, well, John, thank you so much for taking the time to come on and talk to us about some predator hunting. I cannot wait to go and watch that video because I'm a little fired up right now. Now, <laughs> like yeah, get on there and check them out. We've got a we've got a lot of videos out. I think we've already put out seven or eight through the summer or something like that and actually yeah. going to come out with another one here just the next couple of days so we're going to check them out and a lot of them for yeah. the last few years we got about four years worth of uh predator hunting videos on there so there's everything from coyotes and big old big bobcats come to the call and plus some uh spot and stock black bear hunting at west all right well cool well again thank you so much for taking the time and Something tells me we'll have you back on the show soon. <laughs> Why, well, yeah, yeah, anytime. I, I, uh, I enjoy talking with you, Terry. It was, it was fun. Yeah, totally. And you you do such, I don't know, with the whole, like, out west and stuff. And if you don't mind, maybe we could have you back on in a month or two to talk about your experience out there. Sure, yeah, yeah, anytime. Sounds great. Cool. And that'll do it. Thanks so much for listening. Don't forget to find the show on iTunes. Just search for Huntfish Travel Podcast. Hit the subscribe button. You can also follow me on social media. Just go to huntfishtravel.net and click on the social media icon of your choice. The only one that's not listed there is Periscope. You can always find me on Periscope. Same Twitter handle, at Carrie Zilka. Until next time.